Hi, I'm here today with Bill McVisk. Uh, he's a patient medical records expert, uh, a litigator. He works with hospitals that are dealing with EMR-related uh, patient medical records and whatnot. And I had him on my show today because I want to talk a little bit about electronic medical records. Uh, Bill, they said that electronic medical records were going to revolutionize everything and make everything so much better. Uh, what's the reality of what's happened since we've brought about medical records? I, I mean, a lot of EMR has been great. I mean, there's an ability of doctors to provide records to other people that they couldn't have done before. There's the ability, for instance, of a radiologist to look at a film uh, that was taken, and he can be in uh, San Diego, and the patient can be in New York, and it still works. The problems, though, there are some problems. I mean, the biggest problem I see is that, I mean, I, anyone who's ever gone to a doctor's, uh, you'll notice these days the doctors are focused on their computers instead of focusing on the patient. And what they're doing is hitting all sorts of drop-down uh, menus and stuff. And I think we're losing something from the standpoint of presenting uh, care, uh, physicians and nurses in malpractice cases. It creates a situation where you don't really get a sense of exactly what that nurse or doctor is thinking, and so the records just aren't uh, quite as helpful in medical malpractice cases as they used to be. On the upside, we can read them now, whereas in the <laughs> past we had to worry about doctor's handwriting. Yeah. Um, I know from experience working as an EMR, a patient medical record expert, that discovery can often become uh, challenging. Um, when an attorney's preparing a witness for deposition related to patient medical records, how does, um, what are some of the things that you, you look for and, and care about in that well, process? Well, the first thing, quite frankly, is to make sure I have the entire record. I can't tell you how often uh, I'm getting records where I get part of the record, and for some reason, I don't know if it's stored on a different server or what, I'm not getting all the record. I may get all the physician's part of the record, but not the nurse's part of the record. Uh, and it's obviously that's essential. Uh, other problems, but when a, like when I'm preparing a witness for a, for a deposition, the big problem is <coughs> that they're not used to seeing these records printed out. I mean, in the past, they would mm -hmm. look at the chart. It would be exactly the same as the chart they were looking at in the hospital. Now they're looking at the chart on a computer screen when they're in the hospital. But when you're preparing them for a deposition, you've got a paper chart. Mm -hmm. And the paper chart prints out terribly. Uh, every time there's a, one, uh, a slight change of any kind in the record from one, from one uh, minute to the next, mm -hmm. the chart prints out a separate, prints out the page again and again and again. So there's all this stuff. And that it's just getting the nurses and the doctors to know where in the chart their entry is going to be is, is really uh, makes it a little bit harder. Yeah, it, I have experience working with that. And I know that HIPAA requires that every instance of that medical record, pre-editing, post-editing, that that data be preserved and discoverable. But in reality, a lot of the software packages, they only have reports that run the last version. So to, to get into those the, the true audit trail, you often have to get into the database backend to get access to that information. Well, and, and I think audit trails are the other aspect of things that makes it a little bit harder in, the, uh, in this situation. In the past, we basically, I could give the original medical record to the plaintiff's attorney to inspect. If, there, if somebody had erased something or done something mm -hmm. like that, it would be pretty obvious. I would hopefully know about it before the plaintiff's attorney would know about it, then I'd deal with that. But uh, it may not be obvious now because people can go in, mm -hmm. change records, and now if an audit trail is suddenly showing me, oh my God, somebody was in and did something to the record and it's two or three weeks after the mm -hmm. treatment was over, yeah. or say two or three hours after a terrible incident occurred, that's going to make it look concerning. Um, so I think, you know, from our standpoint, it's a matter of making sure healthcare providers are aware of how to do it in a way that isn't going to look like you're trying to yeah. fake or lie. 
and there's a big difference between accessing a record, medical record, and editing it. And that's right. where sometimes attorneys on both sides become confused about the significance of what's happening with the patient medical Right, I mean, record. patients' ac records get accessed all the time. Uh, you know, you might, maybe it's to prepare for a deposition. You have to access the record to look at it. Maybe it's because there's follow-up treatment and you uh, need to access the record. That happens all the time, but it's important, you know, sometimes on these audit trails, it's not always easy. Is no. this just an access or is somebody going in and changing something? And, and there's a whole another layer, too. I, I know from my experience working with many of the packages that the hospitals often use systems that have something known as sticky notes where they can kind of put comments about a patient. And there's a, a wide perception that those notes aren't discoverable. Uh, just because the software doesn't have a report that will run it, it doesn't mean that if someone like me is coming in and I get access to the backend database, those comments about the patient and whatnot become apparent. Uh, but unfortunately, it's difficult to get at that data if you don't know what you're looking for. And that creates a real problem if you're defending the hospital. Because mm -hmm. if, if, if I don't know about the, the sticky notes in the beginning, first of yeah. all, I'm not going to be thinking, oh my goodness, and then if you come and discover them, it obviously is going to be, oh, I was trying to hide those notes. Yeah. Um, or the hospital was trying to hide those notes, which is always the worst thing you can do as a defendant in litigation. Mm. Um, and, and they're clearly, if, there, if there's something about a patient in those notes, it's almost never privileged. Mm -hmm. It is discoverable, and it should be provided uh, immediately. So, you know, there's a tendency I see for the hospitals to try to cover things up. Do you think that there's some value in bringing in, when you're defending a hospital, your own forensic expert to dig around and find out what's really happening? See, I, don't, I don't think the hospitals are intentionally trying to cover stuff up. I, I, I really don't think that's, I've, I've almost never seen that happen. There may be, you know, one or two, but in most of these cases, I think the hospitals are, tr are trying to find out what the truth is. Mm -hmm. That being said, the hospital may not be aware that some of these things, because you know the, the the risk manager for the hospital might not be fully aware of all of the situations that are involved in electronic medical records. And yes, at that point, it may be a good idea for me mm -hmm. uh, just to have somebody like you go through those mm -hmm. records. Uh, let me know before I produce them to the plaintiff. I would like to know. No what's out there. Yeah. It would probably be a lot more useful for you to get just a listing of the changes on the record so you're not looking at the whole, the whole document, but maybe here's the first instance and then change one, change two, change three, sure. so you can see before text, after text. Sure. And that, that's the type of thing that uh, un unfortunately there's not canned reports that are in the software that do that. I, I think that could be by design of the software makers because they don't want to make it worse for their clients, the hospitals, but uh, you know it's certainly possible that it's just something that was never asked for. That's quite possible, <laughs> and I and I it I I have I don't know any of these software makers, but um, it, I, to me it would be really helpful to know what those are. Of course, that does make it more discoverable, easily discovered by the plaintiffs attorneys. But on the other hand. We, I, I, as the defense attorney, need to know about it, and if it's if there's a change that's improper, I need to know about it right away. Yeah. So, what kind of problems can occur when different hospitals have different uh, different providers have different EMR systems? Well, that can that can create problems of of a number of ways. Um, sometimes the software of one hospital doesn't communicate with the software mm -hmm. of another. There have been situations, for instance, where a physician enters an order for something to happen, and then it, because of the software problems, it doesn't get to the, to the provider who's supposed to do it, and they don't mm -hmm. know that they're supposed to do it. That creates serious problems for patient care. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and, and similarly, it's like if a hospital is discharging a patient to a nursing home, and they want the nursing home to have a certain specific type of care regimen afterward, that can create problems if they don't communicate well. Well, thanks a bunch, Bill, for being on the show. I appreciate it. Lee, thanks so much.